Hey people, it's China Video Games and the World, and today I want to talk to y'all about a buzzword that is often used in pop culture, and it got so overused since The Force Awakens. What I am talking about right now is the buzzword known as Mary Sue. Yep, time to poke another hornet's nest, or should I say, be very blunt to what I'm about to say. Now, as you all know, I made a video on how Outrage Warriors poison criticism of movies, TV shows, video games, comics, and so on. Link in the description. These outrage warriors use buzzwords that are just as tiresome and overused. Woke, SJW, problematic, etc. When it comes to outrage warriors that cry woke and SJW, it's due to inclusion of LGBT, BIPOC, and female characters. However, these people also cry one buzzword that has become so tiresome. That's right, the buzzword is Mary Sue. Now, what exactly is a Mary Sue? A Mary Sue is a female character that is unrealistically one without flaws. She's perfect, is never wrong, and is so overpowered that no one can defeat her. Originally written as an idealized version of an author or a fan fiction, the term Mary Sue was coined by Paula Smith in the 1973 parody A Trekkie's Tale as the name of a character standing in for idealized female characters widespread in Star Trek fan fiction. A male character with similar traits may be labeled a Gary Stu or Marty Stu. In a 2012 interview, Paula Smith said that the male alternative is rarely pointed out, citing James Bond and Superman as popular Marty Stu characters. She argued that male Mary Sue's benefit the male audience's coming of age would get focused on in the culture is defined by boys and young men. Psychologically, there's a turning point in men's lives. There's a point where they need to break away from women in their youth and then later come back to women as grown men. But many men never make it, never quite come back to a world that includes women as human beings. Which characters are often considered a Mary Sue? Well, a lot of people say Riri Williams, but most notably, Rey of the Star Wars sequel trilogy. Why do they call her a Mary Sue? Spoiler warning. In the concluding battle of The Force Awakens, while Poe and Black Squadron are fighting to destroy the Starkiller base, Kylo Ren mortally wounds Finn during a lightsaber duel. And just when Kylo is about to take it, Rey uses the Force to take the lightsaber and then duels against him. And not only that, she is also known to be a skilled mechanic and also a great pilot as we see her capacity to pilot the Millennium Falcon. After the reviews, people started calling Rey a Mary Sue and they continued calling her as such after The Last Jedi and still do even after The Rise of Skywalker. Writer Caroline Framke of, Bo of Vox contrasts these points with similar aspects of the character of Luke Skywalker, concluding that Rey's realization of her abilities was not necessarily any more impressive than Luke's. Framke also argues that fans' instinctive criticism of characters like Rey reflects a double standard in that seemingly perfect male heroes are rarely so criticized. Now, a lot of people continue to say that Rey is a Mary Sue, but here's the thing. Anakin and Luke had certain Gary Stu traits. For example, Anakin being a child built his own pot racer and his skill is a skilled pilot as well. Hell, he even won the pot racing in Boonta. He destroyed a Trade Federation space station orbiting Naboo, causing all the droid units to deactivate, allowing the Gungans to win the battle and forcing Viceroy Newt Gunray to surrender. Luke Skywalker destroyed the Death Star using the Force without any training of any kind, except he, only for a few hours he trained with Obi-Wan. Anakin trained for 10 years as a Padawan of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Luke trained for 8 to 10 weeks with Yoda, and Rey tra trained with Luke for only a few days and a year with Leia. Not to forget that Rey fought for survival on Jakku since childhood when she was abandoned. So you gotta say that Luke is more Gary Stu than Anakin and Rey. Sorry to say, but it's true. Now, when Captain Marvel premiered in 2019, many said that she was a Mary Sue. 
Do I think of her as a Mary Sue? No. She's far from it, to be honest with you. Problem is that Rey and Captain Marvel get a lot of crap for being female. And it's no wonder why Daisy Ridley deleted her social media pages because of a bunch of ass wipes attacking her. Why am I bringing all of this up? Well, it's not only because it was trending on Twitter today, but also with this new Predator movie called Prey, which was a huge success, there are jerkheads calling the, the main character a Mary Sue. Since the main character is a female and happens to be an indigenous woman. <gasps> indigenous! And not white. And hey, I love that idea that she's indigenous. Hell, we had an indigenous character in the original Predator movie, Billy. And the actor, he passed away. May he rest in peace. I haven't seen the movie yet, but I hear great things about it from my friends. And I will see it pretty soon. Problem is, I am busy. And you know how life can kick you in the ass when you don't have much time to do what you love and doing and what you want as well. Anyways, people are already complaining about this. Mainly the outrage wars that cry how a movie show or TV show has gone woke or SJW because of the inclusion of female characters, BIPOC and LGBTQ. We all know who they are and it happens to be Josiah Rices and Geeks and Gamers. I'm not surprised. I told you before I insubbed from both of them due to them constantly bitching and whining about wokeness and SGWism where there is none. For the record, I will always love those old school 80s action films with macho guys and big guns like those movies that star Stallone, Schwarzenegger, Carl Weathers, Dolph Lundgren, etc. They all kicked ass. Yes, indeed. Whenever I hear some outreach word crime buzzwords like problematic and how these movies promote toxic masculinity, I say this. Well, I suppose the movie was really good then. <laughs> it turns out that they want to see an alpha male kicking ass and fighting against a predator. Do these guys have a problem with female leads, BIPOC, and LGBT characters? Well, they do indeed. Imagine if the first Alien movie from 1979 came out today. They would be screaming that Ripley is a Mary Sue. She is far from a Mary Sue. Ripley was so scared of that creature, but after losing her fellow crew members, she had to fight and survive not only for her own sake, but for those she lost and avenged her deaths by facing off against a xenomorph, and also for the sake of a daughter she would never get to see again, which makes it a lot more tragic and sad. In Aliens, she went deep into the Xenomorph's queen nest in order to save her newt from a face hugger. She was originally going to be a man, but they embraced the idea of turning her into a woman. She was very well written and very well developed. She is a strong female character who is considered the best of them all. Do I consider Sarah Connor of the Terminator franchise a Mary Sue? No. She was an ordinary young woman who worked as a waitress. She did not know how to handle firearms and did not know about the, against the war against the machines or that she would be the one to give birth to John Connor, prophesied leader of the resistance, until she encountered Kyle Reese, who fall, they fought fall in love and they would fight together against the machine, the Terminator that was tasked to kill Sarah Connor. Because she was going to give birth to John Kana. <laughs> Do I consider Cena a Mary Sue? No. She was destined to be a great warrior. And Cena, Warrior Princess, is one of the best shows ever. I did not see every episode, but you cannot deny that it was a damn good show. Is Captain Janeway a Mary Sue? No. Is Sarah Lance a Mary Sue? No. Is Michonne a Mary Sue? No. Is Katniss Everdeen a Mary Sue? No. All of these women are well-written characters. I love them. Sarah becomes the captain and leader of the legends because that title was passed on to her by Rip. She's strong, independent, takes shit from no one, but she can have her own flaws as well. She's also kind and caring. And I felt sad for her 
when, spoiler alert, her father died it, at the end of season six of Arrow, all because of that bastard, Ricardo Diaz. Captain Janeway, the female lead in Star Trek Voyager, was a very strict commanding officer who commanded discipline among her crew, but still, she was kind, loving, and caring, and would loosen up from time to time. Michonne was a lawyer before the zombie apocalypse. Like every man and woman struggling against the undead and the living, she had to survive and became skillful with her blade. Katniss Everdeen fights to take down a system that puts children to fight to the death against each other to bring glory to their districts. And that's no different from... And the government of Panem doing that to kids? That's no different from child soldiers, man. Like, that's super fucked up. It was a death game that she and Peter Malark survived together. Hell, I do not think... I do not think that Jin Erso is a Mary Sue. Her childhood was robbed from her by the Empire when her mother was killed and her father was forced to build the Death Star against his own free will. She and Cassian Andor risked their lives to obtain the Death Star plans and send it to the Rebel Alliance. Our female characters like Zelda, Samus Aran, Jill Valentine, Claire Redfield, Aloy, Lara Croft, Chun-Li, Sonya Blade, Ellie, Aveline de Grand Play, Tifa Lockhart, all Mary Sue's? Hell no! What the hell ever happened to criticizing a movie? What I mean is, what happened to criticizing character development, writing, acting, directing, editing, music, and storytelling? Nowadays, people look for something to complain, and that is sad. Some outrage warriors scream, Problematic! Oh, so white! Toxic masculinity! Whenever they criticize a movie, because especially if it's one of those 70s, 80s, 90s action films or comedy films, Shoo! But the worst ones right now are those who cry Mary Sue, Wokeness, and SJW Propaganda. People these days don't criticize a movie, show, video game, comic, or cartoon about development, writing, music, acting, directing, and editing. All they do is whine and complain that it did not have any alpha males or doesn't do any type of performative wokeness that they're trying to push. <sighs> It's a good thing I prefer to criticize movies from the old-fashioned way. I won't listen to criticism from those who scream problematic, not even the mainstream media, and I will not listen to the hashtag get woke go broke crowd. If your movie reviews, video game reviews, TV show reviews, or comic book reviews is based on hating something or certain demographics of people, I ask you this once again. What the hell are you doing with your life wasting such time with petty and stupid complaints? <sighs> sorry, but I'm really sorry. Hashtag sorry, not sorry. I'm really blunt in what I have to say. And that's all I have to say. Comment, like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell button. I'm John of Video Games in the World. Have a good one. Later.